Now this six to fix in six is going to be of real interest to those of you involved in aseptic um, manufacture because as you all know in aseptic manufacture we have to conduct media fills and sometimes, certainly in my experience, they often fail. So this six to fix is, to, is going to concentrate on the six essential things you have to do in the event of a media fuel failure because what we do know is that these media fills are a way of life for us in aseptic fill and finish. We do them on a regular basis to challenge the aseptic security of the entire process. So they're designed to simulate the process. What we also know is that when failures happen, and I've experienced quite a few in my career, the pressure can be immense. And if you don't manage that press pressure, you can make really poor decisions. You can go back into manufacture in a state of chaos. Um, and what is really important is being prepared because um, if you ha haven't had a failure yet, you probably have one waiting for you around the corner. So these six to fix will walk you through the essential things you've got to do. Number one, don't panic. Uh, now that seems pretty obvious, but when a media field fails, uh, everything stops. So if you're in a busy production facility with back orders, and suddenly you get a media fill failure, everything stops. Uh, you stop manufacturing. So that pressure can be immense commercially. And a media fill investigation can take one week, two weeks to actually do. So the commercial pressures to start up again can be very, very significant. Resist the temptation to panic. Well, you can't panic because if you do start to panic, it compromises the investigation. People rush through the investigation and you end up with a, with a poor result. So don't panic. Uh, the first thing you check is that the result is actually okay. You hope your microbiologist has given you, uh, um, you know, the, the right result rather than you know, the contamination having been introduced in the micro lab. So you've got to verify that first. But it's really, really important that when you do an investigation, you are organized in the way that you do it. Because when you do these properly, you are looking at a great deal of data you've got multiple stakeholders and people involved and engaged from very senior management dealing with supply chain issues down to the operators looking at the manufacturing process. So lots of data, lots of interested parties, lots of pressure. You've got to stay organized in the way that you manage that data. The obvious question is, well, what organism identity is it? Because the identity of the microorganism will give you a sense of its source you know, it's a staphylococcus, it's come from people. If it's a bacillus, it could have come from people, but, you know, that is an environmental contaminant. If it's a pseudomonas, that's indicative of moisture and water, and so on and so on. So the organism identity to species level is really, really important because it will at least direct you to potential source and also the root of contamination. How did it get from that source into your media? You're also interested in how many units have failed. You know, is this a major failure where hundreds of units have failed, which indicate a significant failure, for example, in connections or in filtration? Or, as is often the case, is it just one or two units of a skin-borne organism? They're the toughest investigations to do because, uh, particularly for aseptic operations, where you have a lot of operator engagement, and involvement trying to then track down the source can be challenging but it is helped considerably if you have designed the media fill study through your protocols to enable you to identify that unit that has become contaminated when was it filled where was it filled and by who so this is where the videos come in and the way that you track the units that are filled the better you track and trace them the better you are able to focus the investigation. If you can't focus the investigation, the likelihood of you finding the source and fixing it, frankly, is quite remote. So this is really, really important, and you need to design that into your media fill protocol. Ultimately, though, um, you've got to start, you've got to review, review your entire process from start to finish. Um, and you are looking at potential sources of that contamination because you can't just take a guess to say it's a staphylococcus, it's come from the filling operator. You've also got to make sure that 
Other, you cannot assume that other parts of the process have not contributed to that contamination. What I said earlier about organising your data and the investigation, we use and recommend the filter and funnel model. Right at the start of the investigation, as you go from start through to finish of the process, you are looking at a great deal of data. And unless you organise it using Ishikawa and those types of methods, people get really, really confused. They miss the symptoms, they miss the patterns, and therefore the investigation is compromised. So as you do the investigation, you're, there are certain things that you will start to say, look, it definitely isn't the autoclave. You know, if you've just had two, two, a couple of contaminated units, the staphylococcus, you can safely assume that the autoclave did not fail. You've looked at the, the mastered temperature records. So you can safely say the autoclave is in control. Filtration is in control. So you're using data to definitely say what it is not. But you ultimately get to a point where you've got to make a hypothesis. And certainly in my experience, um, in 37 years of manufacturing aseptic products, I've never truly been able to put my hand on my heart and say, this is the definite cause. Because the variables are so great, uh, you can never usually be that sure. So you've got to generate some hypothesis. You know, you, you think it's this operator doing this connection for these reasons. You generate the hypothesis, but in order to do that, you need to remove what it definitely is not. Once you've identified probable cause, um, this is when implementation of your corrective and preventative actions are, uh, are, are really, really key. Correction in terms of what you do now, and this is really key engagement of your qualified persons to decide, look, are previous batches associated with this particular failure? In other words, how do we ring fence these batches from others in relation to this media fill failure? So there's that obvious risk assessment that has to be done. And what's really, really important is that the true preventive actions are given proper consideration. And sometimes that is things like redesign. You know, if, if an operator has contaminated a unit because of a poor intervention, don't retrain that operator on how to do that intervention again properly. Consider engineering out that intervention in the first place. There is no such thing as a good intervention. The important thing is you're focusing on prevention. And then finally, make sure you start up in a controlled way. This whole process, as I said earlier, can take weeks. Um, supply chain and your commercial people are putting a great deal of pressure because they have to, they want to supply patients and the customer. And you can come under a great deal of pressure to start up very, very quickly. And if you do that in an uncontrolled way, if you haven't redesigned, if you haven't done the training correctly and properly, you start up very, very quickly and then the failure happens again when you do the repeat media fill. So there's your very quick six to fix. It's by no means a comprehensive list, but if you do those things very well, you will be fine. We've got a lot of aseptic manufacturing specialists, including XFDA and MHRA auditors at NSF. So please, if you need any more guidance on your aseptic processes, if you have a media fill failure, you can't fix, give us a call. We probably can be a considerable help to you.